we have a now a next session which approaching. I want to introduce you next speaker, Georgi Dalakishvili. Uh, he is like, just imagine, it's top one person on Stack Overflow and member of top three freelance software developers network. Like, Georgi has a very good experience, like most of decade of the experience in mostly working with uh, C Sharp, ISP.NET Core, REST, GraphQL, WCF, Xamarin, Android, Entity Framework, and a lot of different cloud providers. He will talk about the beyond relationship relational with Entity Framework. And just to remember, here you have the chat in Discord and Telegram, and you can ask your question there. Georgi, stage yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, uh, I'm happy to, to be talking on this conference. And uh, today I will talk about, uh, so my talk title is Beyond Relational with Entity Framework. And I will use about some uh, relatively uh, seldomly used features of Entity Framework and some of the new features that are planned in uh, Entity Framework 8. So today I will talk about uh, storing JSON data with Entity Framework, also uh, storing a table history in SQL Server using the temporal tables feature. And I will also show you how to work with hierarchical data with SQL Server and uh, Entity Framework. Uh, so I, I'm a currently a tech lead at Space International. I have 15 years experience working with C Sharp and .NET, and I also have a couple of uh, open source projects on GitHub. So if you are interested in them, please check them out on GitHub. Uh, they are also related to Entity Framework, so I think you will find them interesting. Okay, let's start with JSON. Uh, so I, I, I think uh, everybody is pretty much familiar with JSON um, format and JSON structure. Uh, so the quick recap is that JSON is an open standard for exchanging data with different uh, services for sending data between front end and uh, back end of the application. Uh, it's a lightweight, uh, easy to parse and uh, uh, human readable text. It's also language independent, so it's does not it is not tied to any specific programming language. And it can be used to store unstructured data, so it's useful in any in, in different scenarios when we don't have any strict structure like. Uh, so what is common in a relational database and sometimes we want to uh, store unstructured data and JSON is a good fit for that for such cases. So JSON is built on uh, two structures. Either it's either a collection of key value pairs or a, or a list of values such as an array and it has some uh, primitive value types, string, boolean, uh, number and so on. Uh, and here is a sample JSON that can be used to represent a person with first name, last name, age, address, and different uh, attributes. So why, why store data in JSON in database? Well, uh, uh, databases are great for storing relational data, but sometimes we need to store denormalized data, for example, for easier access to the data to avoid uh, unnecessary and complicated joins. We can fetch the necessary data with a single query. Uh, it also uh, gives us flexibility. For example, in, in some scenarios, we have uh, we, we need to keep data that uh, that has many many attributes. For example, if you if you have a if you are building a project for online shop, for example, and you have a shop has different uh, items that it sells. For example, you have TV, mobile phone, and uh, maybe it's even fridge. Like for TV, you don't need to uh, keep the CPU and uh, how much memory it has, but it's important for for phones, laptops, and 
such devices. For for um, TV, you need the size of the TV, but it, it's not uh, the size of the screen, but it does not apply for uh, other items that you may sell. So either you, you get a very big table with many, many columns, uh, which, uh, which you will be using only some of them, or you can just uh, keep the data in JSON and you will you will only fill the attributes that are applicable to that type uh, of items that you are selling. Also, it's it's useful in other scenarios, like uh, for example, if you are storing sensor data from IoT devices, the data may vary from one sensor to another. It's also useful to store the analytics from from uh, uh, websites, for example, if you are keeping uh, clicks and uh, user, uh, how the user interacts with your website, it can uh, have uh, some different structures uh, for different events. And also, if you if you are building a, a webhook listener, you may want to store the uh, data that the webhook sends to you and the uh, webhook data can be unstructured because uh, for different actions you get different type of uh, uh, JSON in the request. So if you keep them in tables, you would need to either uh, create uh, different tables for different uh, actions or you would need to denormalize all the data in uh, many different tables. So uh, why, why, why use uh, uh, JSON in relational data instead versus uh, just using a document database that is uh, built for storing uh, documents like JSON. So if you have mostly structured data and uh, you want to keep it in relational data, but you also have some, uh, some little cases when you need uh, unstructured data, then storing JSON in the database is a great solution because you don't need to maintain a separate service. service. Uh, it's less uh, hassle to, uh, to for the infrastructure, infrastructure team. So you just uh, keep everything together in the relational uh, database. You also have the database uh, ACID uh, guarantees available for your data. But uh, if you if you have data in JSON that's frequently updated, uh, or if you want to utilize some advanced features of document databases such as automatic sharding and so on, in such cases, a document-oriented database such as, such as MongoDB would be a better fit. Now let's see how JSON works in SQL Server. So for uh, storing JSON in SQL Server, there is no uh, special type. They are just stored in varchar or nvarchar columns, like you would keep any uh, any textual data in the database. But we have some JSON functions, which we can use from uh, TSQL or, as we will see, from entity frameworks that, that helps us to query the data we query the JSON data and uh, also update the JSON data if we need. And also what's nice is that SQL Server supports indexing, indexing the JSON columns, so it will help us to speed up our queries. Uh, so the common JSON functions are is JSON, which tells us if the, if the given string is valid JSON or not. It's frequently used to create a check constraint on the table so that you don't uh, uh, insert some invalid data which is not JSON by mistake in the column. We also have a JSON value for extracting a, a single value from the JSON column and JSON query for uh, extracting uh, an array or an object. And also JSON modify for updating the JSON data. So if we want to uh, create a table which stores data, we just add the nvarchar column. We, can, we add the constraint uh, to make sure that the column is JSON. And that's all. We can 
run the insert statement like we would uh, run the insert for any other uh, virtual column. And as long as we pass the value JSON, it will save the JSON in the database. Uh, here's an example of JSON value. Uh, uh, as you can see, we can uh, select uh, some normal columns uh, from the database, ordinary columns which which are separate from each other, as well as we can also uh, from this info column which contains the JSON data, we can extract the city by passing the JSON pass as a second argument, and it will uh, get as the uh, city for that row for, for that row. And JSON query is used to extract an array from, from JSON. This is, if we run this query, we can also put the JSON value in the where clause, and we will get the result just you would get for any other SQL query. So no surprises here, no major differences between JSON or any other type of data. And you can use the JSON modify to update the data. Uh, so to work with uh, JSON with Entity Framework Core, we have uh, uh, multiple possible approaches. Uh, the si simple one is to use uh, value converters and to convert to JSON ourselves before uh, saving the data and uh, parse it back uh, after uh, reading the data. But from Entity Framework Core 7, we have uh, built-in uh, functionality in Entity Framework, which works for SQL Server at the moment. Support for SQL Lite is planned in Entity Framework 8. In this case, the uh, Entity Framework provider will uh, convert between JSON and the entity type for us, so we don't have to write any uh, any code for uh, serializing and deserializing the JSON. And what's uh, important is that if we write an edit framework uh, query uh, and, for example, uh, filter by the one of the properties of the JSON objects, the query is in some scenarios uh, translated to database uh, query. So the querying is done on the database instead of uh, bringing all the data on the, uh, to the application side and then filtering there. Uh, so we can see a simple example here. Uh, so this is the approach of using value converters. Uh, I have here uh, a model which looks like this. We have an employee with a list of contacts and a address object. And in the configuration, uh, here is a method uh, called store as JSON, which, which will uh, do the serialization and the serialization when saving the entity or when reading the entity from the database. Uh, so the, the only advantage of this approach is that it works for every uh, relational database, not just SQL Server. It works for uh, MySQL, Oracle, Postgres, so we can use it in any entity framework version as well as with any relational database. The disadvantage is that uh, if we if we uh, if we insert some data with here, and if we then try to filter on the uh, filter like this, then this query does not, uh, it, Entity Framework can't execute this query because it does not ha know how to turn this into the JSON query to run on the database. If we filter by the, if we filter by users, then obviously it, we will get the record back. But uh, if we then uh, modify the, uh, JSON property, address details is stored as JSON. Uh, the whole object will be sent in database instead of uh, instead of one property. So in in Entity Framework uh, seven, in Entity Framework seven, 
uh, we don't need to call this store as JSON anymore. Instead, uh, for this employee entity, we say that the billing address property is owned by the employee entity because we always want to include the billing address together with the employee. And we then just call the to JSON method, which will uh, make sure that the billing address and contacts is stored as JSON in the database and automatically the cell and that it's automatically deserialized to the uh, .NET type when we read the data back. So in such scenarios, uh, we can uh, the filtering that did not work with, uh, entity, uh, with value converters will work in this case. So if we run this uh, query, so the billing address property is now, as, as you can as we see, it's stored as JSON. But if we run this query, this query will, will be translated to the uh, database query and the filtering will happen on the SQL Server side. And when we modify the property, Edit Framework is also able to track the changes that we made to the JSON property. So calling the save changes method will uh, uh, will save this state property to the database as it was expected. And if we run in the situation where Edit Framework does not support the uh, query that we want to execute in JSON, we can always fall back to the from SQL query and run the uh, JSON query as we would like in the database. For example, this query will filter the contacts array and we'll find any contact that starts with name John. Uh, for indexing the data, we need to create a computed column in the database, which will extract the property from, from the JSON that we want to index on and then create an index on the uh, on the JSON on this computed property. Uh, with entity framework, we can also achieve the same. Uh, for example, here we specify that employee has a computed column, which, which is computed like this. So we extract from the billing address property the, uh, from the billing address JSON column, we extract the state property. Uh, this is completed column, but it's not uh, persisted to the database, so it does not take any storage. And then we just create an index on this uh, state column that we just created, the uh, uh, virtual column. And after that, when we run the query, which, which we showed here, uh, because this is also uh, filtering on the JSON, on the state property of the billing address property, the index will kick in and the database will perform our query uh, faster than without index. In Entity Framework 8, some uh, newer uh, features are planned, like supporting the uh, primitive collections. For example, you can map a collection of integers or map a collection of strings or date times uh, to the JSON without any configuration. If you have an array or list, uh, it currently does not, it's not supported in Entity Framework 7, but it already works in preview version of Entity Framework 8. So uh, that will also be available when it's released. And uh, there are uh, more enhancements uh, planned for Entity Framework uh, JSON support in, 8, uh, in version 8. So uh, you can visit this link for to find out what what the team plans for uh, JSON supporting Entity Framework Seven. Uh, so uh, as for Postgres SQL, in Postgres we have a separate uh, type for JSON, which is JSONP, and Postgres has its own uh, set of uh, operators that. Uh, for filtering the JSON. For example, we have this hello operator for filtering. Uh, we can also use the subscript syntax for filtering the JSON in the database. And the Postgres uh, uh, provider has uh, already uh, had support for JSON even before Entity Framework 7. So uh, 
if we uh, map uh, if we map the and use the config configuration uh, we just need to specify for these properties in case of Postgres that we want to store it in JSON B column and uh, entity framework when working with Postgres will automatically handle the serialization and the serialization to JSON like it works in uh, entity framework seven. And obviously we can also we can also run the queries the same way as it works in uh, for SQL Server. If we run this query, it will uh, translate it to the operators uh, that Postgres implements for filtering JSON and will run the uh, corresponding query on the database. And as with SQL Server, if we need some advanced uh, functionality, we can also use from SQL here and just use some built-in uh, Postgres SQL uh, functions to do the filtering uh, if Entity Framework Provider is not able to translate the query for us. And just like SQL Server, Postgres SQL supports indexing the JSON data, so our queries uh, will be fast in Postgres as well. Uh, so the next feature is temporal tables. Temporal tables help us to store automatically the history of the tables. This means that every time, every time we run an update or delete, the history is uh, saved in a history table of the uh, main table. So with temporal tables, uh, we have two columns automatically edit. Uh, in this case, you can see it's period start and period end. We can't insert uh, values in these columns. They, the values are automatically inserted by the system when we insert new data or when we run the update or delete statements. And SQL Server uh, will create a copy of the table. You can see here we create a table called persons. And we also specified that we want the history table to be called persons history. So person's history will give the history of the data. So it's uh, useful for different scenarios, like if we have audit requirements and need to store like uh, what modifications we are made, or if we need to analyze trends over time, or uh, allow the users to compare different versions, or maybe even undo changes. Uh, we can use this feature of uh, SQL Server. It's uh, supported only for SQL Server. I, I, I don't think that there is uh, any other major database that supports it. So it's an SQL Server only feature. Uh, for querying the current data, we just query the uh, table uh, like you query any other uh, SQL table. You get all, only current values. The period columns don't appear in the uh, results set unless you explicitly specify them in the select list. So from the consumer side of view, you, there is no difference for when you query the current data. For querying the historical data, we need to add the for system time clause to the uh, query. And there are five different options we can query for some specific date with as of uh, clause. So we specify the date where that we want to get the data for. We can also get the data for range using the from to between and or contained in uh, uh, operators. Or we can use uh, for system time all to get all history and all current data for the database. So for the uh, entity framework support. It's available since entity framework core six. We can configure the table as temporal by calling the is temporal method when configuring the entity mapping. And we can also customize the period column names if we want to. Uh, once we have the temporal table, we just uh, perform CRUD like insert, update, and delete operations 
like we do it with any other table. There is no difference from that point of view. The only additional query operators uh, that we have are become available when we try when we want to query the historical data. For example, you can see here this example. If we want to uh, query the person's table um, to query the state as it was one hour ago, we call the temporal as of method and pass the date that we need uh, to get the data for that time. Uh, I will can now show the example. So here is the configuration. We specify that these tables are temporal. And we can run the query for to get the state like it was one hour ago, or we can run the temporal between uh, some specific dates. And to access the period start and period end columns, so we use the uh, entity framework uh, shallow properties feature. So these period start and period end uh, properties, they don't exist on our model because we they are automatically populated by the database and we can't specify their values, but we can access them like with this syntax. We can read their values, we can if we want to show the history in uh, chronological order, we call the order by method and we can pass the period start or period end as we want. And we can also get so say our values back and uh, show them to the user or do whatever what we want. I, I can also show how the tables look in the database. Here is the person's table, you can see that it's system versioned. And here is a history table that calls, keeps the history of the main table. So the person's, tables, person's table has only the current data, while the person's history table has the history of the table. So we can see here that this row was active from uh, 15th June until 16th June, June for, for this time period. Then I made an update. I changed the first name and last name to my details and this became active from, so these are the same here, from, from this time to this time. And then uh, I think I deleted this record, so that's uh, uh, I updated it, so this is the history of these uh, rows. And fine. So uh, the couple of things to keep in mind when working with tempor temporal tables is that uh, if you have uh, large columns with uh, binary data like NVRChar marks or if you are storing blobs, then the history tables can become huge. So uh, it's something to consider. Also, keep in mind that uh, you can't truncate the history table. You can't make any modifications uh, to the history table. You can't truncate the current table. And uh, no primary key or foreign key support for history table. And there is also no built in way to undo changes or restore deleted records, you have to implement that functionality on top of the uh, history tables yourself. So the next feature is uh, hierarchical data. So hierarchical data is any data where one row has parent-child relationship to, the, to another row. For example, when we have organizational structure or a file system or web pages on a website, they can be, uh, we can think of them as a hierarchical hierarchies between the items. SQL Server has a built-in uh, type for 
keeping such type of uh, data. We call it hierarchy. It's called hierarchy ID, and in Postgres, uh, it's called L3. It's uh, so we just to create a table. We just pass hierarchy ID as a type instead of any other type. And support for hierarchy ID uh, is being added to Entity Framework 8. It's already available in the preview version. The hierarchy ID type uh, has uh, methods that simplify querying the uh, relationship between roles. It has we can get ancestor, get the level of the role, or we can find out if one item is descendant of another item. Uh, so to, to enable uh, hierarchy ID with entity framework core, we need to install this package. And after that, just call use hierarchy ID uh, when we configure the context. Uh, so here is some uh, demo data that I have in the database. You can see its uh, relationship between uh, different positions in an organization. See how we can uh, work with hierarchy from Entity Framework Core. So first of all, we have the hierarchy ID uh, type in .NET from this package. And once we insert the data, we can manipulate it uh, in different ways. For example, if we want to know all the descendants of, uh, of this position, we can uh, write a where clause like this, where pass is descendant of CFO in this case, and we can then order by them by level, and we can also order by them by pass. And it will run the filtering on the database uh, itself instead of, uh, so it is not pulling all the records back, it's uh, converting this to transact SQL queries. So you will see this. Uh, Additional filter here, it's because uh, in uh, SQL Server, this is descendant of uh, treats the item itself as descendant of itself. So that's why we need to make this additional filtering here. Uh, we can also find ancestors uh, the same way. We just switch the uh, positions, the operands of the is descendant of method. And we can find direct ancestors by using the by using the get ancestor method. He, the number indicates the level that we want to go up in this tree. In the tree, so get ancestor will give, give us direct uh, ancestors. Get ancestor with two will give the ancestors on the second level, and so on. And finally, here is an example of. Uh, how we can find the common ancestors of two different uh, items from the tree. Uh, so we filter the we filter the uh, records by making sure that we only get the ancestors of of these both uh, items, and then we order them by path. And the first one will be the uh, lowest item in the tree. That is the uh, common ancestor of this uh, of these two items. So this is how uh, hierarchy ID simplifies handling uh, uh, handling of hier hierarchical data in uh, database. And starting from Entity Framework eight, one of the preview versions, we can this. Feature is also accessible in Entity Framework, so uh, we can work with hierarchical data directly from uh, Entity Framework since Entity Framework 8. This, uh, this concludes the presentation about the 
about these features of Entity Framework Core. So I, I hope you uh, learned some new things and I picked your interest for these features. There is definitely uh, many, many more things that can be uh, discussed about these features. And uh, if you are interested or if you have some questions, I will be here to answer your questions for next five, 10 minutes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you a lot for your presentation. Unfortunately, we do not have a lot of time for the question, but uh, uh, I will ask everybody to put their question to Telegram and as well yeah, to I Discord can, channel. Yeah, I can answer. And thank you a lot for your presentation. It was amazing. Uh, I hope thank you. and I, I know that mo mostly of the developers use the, you, are using this functionality for today because uh, like every application needs to be used. So at least everybody is working with their own types. And uh, by the way, have you had a chance to compare the performance uh, to query hierarchical data and JSON? Because we can actually to store a hierarchy directly in JSON document, and uh, it will be this, it will be mostly from the uh, from storage perspective mostly the same. But what about performance? Have you had the chance to compare what is more performant? Uh, no, I, I I have not made a comparison, but uh, you can uh, create a indexes on uh, hierarchy ID as well. So I, I, I would think that hierarchy ID can be performed very well and uh, probably even better than JSON for, for such cases. Okay, thank you very much for your answer. Mm -hmm.